Kia ora, Year 12. This question is one of the questions from today's long starter, but because we've probably got the earthquake drill, I thought I might YouTube the second question so that you can go through it at home. Um, it's a really nice question with some iterative methods, but only after you've done a little bit of calculus work first. So we're shown um, a curve here, and the curve is for the function y equals root x cos x, and it's just done for the region between um, x between 0 and 3 pi on 2. Okay, and its minimum point is where x is equal to a. The shaded region between the curve and the x-axis is denoted r. Now this is actually for the nicest part of the question, but I've left this out because we haven't yet done integration by parts. Um, and the, the part marked r is not going to come up in parts a or b. Um, if I've got time in the video, I probably will go on and do that last part anyway. Okay, so we have to show that a satisfies the equation tan a is equal to 1 over 2a. So what we're really being asked to do here is just to figure out where is the minimum and what is the x-coordinate. And then once we've figured out that that minimum is going to happen when this is true, we realise that we can't solve that analytically. So in the next part, we're given an iterative formula to find um, one of those, one of the roots, let's see, sequence of values converges to A, yeah, so we're, we're told a starting point down here and we're told the iterative formula, so it's a pretty easy second half of the question, it's the usual pattern. So I know half of you stop watching after about two minutes, so I'm saying all this stuff early. We have to use the formula to determine A to two decimal places. Now you have to make sure that you show that you're using the formula, so you need to show your substitution for at least two goes, and then you can jump to just giving your string of numbers. And you need to make sure that every time you use the formula that you don't round it too hard. So you want to go to at least four decimal places, and your final answer is going to have two decimal places, because we want to make sure that we really have converged. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. It's very early, and I haven't had quite enough coffee yet. So let's start the first bit. Um, we're going to look at my function, and we'll start off by differentiating, because we know that at a minimum, or any stationary point, the first derivative must be 0. So y is equal to root x cos x, which we'll rewrite as x to the power of 1 half times cosine of sine of x. So it's going to be a product rule question. dy by dx will be the first function times the derivative of the second, which is negative sine x, plus the second function, cos of x, times the derivative of the first function, so a half x to the negative one half, and that has to equal zero at point m. Right, let's clean this up. Um, I'm going to take this over to the right-hand side. So we have one over two root x cos x, is equal to root x sine x. Now it's a show that question, so we can't just magically jump to tan x equals 1 over 2x. We've just got to get there in a couple of steps. So let's first divide both sides by cosine. Uh, what am I going to do? I'll do two things at once. I've got 1 over 2 root x. Root x is equal to sine x over cosine of x. So 1 over 2x is equal to tan x at point m. And we know that at m the x coordinate is a. Right, so this feels like a fudge, but it's not, right? So we're saying at m we've been given the x value is a. So we know that it must be true that 1 over 2a is equal to tan a. Okay, this is quite a common um, question set up with um, A-level questions, that suddenly you've got, an, you've got an A in there and not an X. And I think sometimes um, students find that quite weird to start with, but um, all we're doing is we're getting our first derivative, setting it to zero and rearranging, and then we're saying that there's a specific X value where that is true. And in this case, we're told that that X value is A. Right, so that's the first part of it done, um, and that's that was three marks, and now we're going to do the iteration part. Now this is really boring, um, but again, don't don't switch off the video, because this is a really easy place to chuck marks away in the exam. Not that that's the only thing we care about, but you know, if you're going to do the work, 
you might as well get the points. So we're given this iterative formula, and we're even told a starting value. So A2, so A1 is 3. So my second value is going to be pi plus 10 inverse of 1 over 6. And I got that to be 3.30674. So now A3 will equal pi plus 10 inverse of 1 over 2 times that number. And that gets me out 3.291662. Now you don't have to do this substitution. For, I've never seen it that they're asking for it more than twice in a mark schedule. Sometimes they'll say once is enough, sometimes they'll say twice. So let's just go with twice, um, unless it tells you to do more. No, but this is kind of mind-numbingly boring, so that's enough goes of showing the formula. Now just chuck it in your calculator, and let's see when we start to be converging to two decimal places. So this is 3.2916, blah, blah, blah. This is 3.292339. So it looks like we've got convergence to 2DP. Right? So to two decimal places, we've got A is equal to 3.29. Okay, I'm going to stop the video there and upload it, but I'm going to do a second video for students who are working slightly ahead, where I do the hard part of this question, which is quite a full-on um, volumes of solids of revolution question with some nice integration by parts.